Hi. Hey. <laughs> hey there, stranger. Who are you? <laughs> um, I'm Eva. Eva. Hello. <laughs> I think we've met. It's been a little bit. It's hard to know. We're overdue for a Sunday stroll. Oh, we definitely are. And the weather's getting sure. warmer. It is warm. So it is we getting no warmish. We are due for a We're stroll. Due. Well, yeah. we will we will make that work. We will make that work. To those of you who are watching this this little episode, this is is Eva, and uh, I am David, and now you know who is involved. So let's talk a little bit. So I'm kind of I'm going to talk a little bit about the album, and then we're going to talk a little bit about you, and then we're going to talk about something else, um, maybe even something that doesn't have to do with music. I don't know anything else. Okay, well, that's going to be a bummer. <laughs> um, we'll see how that goes. That might be a rough patch. But what do you, what did you do? What do you do? What do you do on the album? What's happening? I played cello on Contemporary oh. Cowboy. Contemporary Cowboy, nice. I, uh, yeah, just improvised over some changes. <laughs> cool. As everyone else did. Yep. Um, we did this in a very COVID era kind of process, you know, one by one, sending you our contributions, the different musicians on that track, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, this was something I've wanted to do for a while. I wanted to make an album, but have like a bunch of different people playing on it. And it was like right around, it's like right around March last year, it was like, all right, I'm gonna get started on this album thing, get people lined up and then stuff happened. And then I was like, well, this could still, this could still potentially work just in a very virtual kind of one at a time kind of method. Yeah. And yeah, I tended, I mean, everyone on the album is like a great musician, yourself included, I, I, I must, I must add. And particularly there were a lot of really strong improvisers. And so a lot of the time I was able to just send my music to the performer and say, do whatever you think is gonna sound good over this. And so basically when you hear other instruments playing on the album, for the most part, that's the musician just kind of speaking their truth, mm. like musically over on top of, of what I've given them, which was really cool. Cause I didn't want to like, I've talked to our mutual friend, Taylor Ackley, who also plays on the album about musical improvisation with great musicians. You know, he asked the question, why would I write a part for someone who can just play something better than what I would write. Just it comes naturally. Exactly, it just comes naturally. Why would I kind of try to stymie and stifle that creative voice by kind of putting more on them? It was like, no, I want this exactly. So this was very much kind of in that vein, in that train of thought. It was very nice that you could give such a nice project for so many people to work on, right? I mean, mm. it's nice to be working on something for a friend and with friends, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah, I don't know how it how it was for the performers on the album, but I know it was certainly nice for me to have a project this past mm -hmm. year to actually have something kind of pushing me forward creatively. So that was nice. That worked out. Um, so yeah, Contemporary Cowboy is a long, a long song. It's about, I think, nine minutes. And it's almost kind of like a chamber, a chamber orchestra with a bunch of different kind of instrumental parts. It doesn't have brass, I suppose. Um, but a lot of woodwinds, a lot of strings, um, some kind of bluegrassy instruments. And you start the whole track. Yeah, the opening. The opening. You get the melody before anyone else does. So that's kind of fun. This was actually <clears throat> a, like a new challenge for me because I improvise, but I, I have improvised in completely different styles of music. Mm. Mm, more Balkan influences, mm. <laughs> Balkan very cool. Kind of creation and contemporary improvisation. So this was um, a refreshing new thing for me to do, and mm. over changes that was a new thing for me in a way. Yeah. Talk, talk to me a little bit about the Balkan influence and in improvisation that you mentioned earlier. <laughs> that sounds intriguing. <laughs> well, I am. Partially Balkan. Mm. <laughs> I'm half Croatian and I have many friends in Croatia that are musicians that I play with, people who primarily write and and perform in different kinds of Balkan styles. So there's all, all sorts of 
music <laughs> mm. from the Balkans. But yeah, some of it is influenced by Turkish music. Um, so sometimes a lot of my improvisations, I, I get influenced by the saz, the Turkish instrument. And mm. I like, I, I really like to use the ornamentations. Also drones, big fan of drones. Nice. So, like those instruments have the string that's a drone, like the same pitch, and you mm -hmm. play on one string on top of it. You improvise on one string while you're playing on the drone. And so I do that on the cello. On the cello. Um, oh, cool. Now I'm exploring something new, which is I'm actually in the middle of a seminar on Sevda, which is a Bosnian, well, this is specifically Bosnian Sevda music, which is um, beautiful mm. vocal instrumental music. Yeah. So I'm just learning new things. Wow. As I go. <laughs> yeah, that's so cool. I hope to let that inform. I like I'm learning Sevda songs from the Sevda master Damir Imamovic and I'm I'm hoping to soak in this new knowledge and see what comes out. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> that's super exciting. And for me too it's a reminder that like, like half of the words you said, <laughs> I was just like, I have no clue, like no idea. And it's like, it's great that I've, you know, I've been in music a long time. And like, I, I think as far as like people go, I tend to know a fair bit about music. And it's always cool for me to like come across a style of music or particular instruments that I like know zilch about. And I am no way an expert either. It's mm. just like a curiosity and, you know, it's something I've heard a lot just by being in that musical culture. It's not even my music really, because my, my roots are Dalmatian, mm. Dalmatia. That music is, everything's in thirds and sixths. Mm. Very beautiful. I, I love playing that music. I love, I love that music, but this other music has more of the influence from Turkey, from like mm. Islam. Um, so that's why I was saying there's so many different <laughs> musics there. So it's not even um, I'm, I'm learning about music that's not even, you know, technically from my culture. Mm. But we're so close to each other, it all becomes mixed, you know, and and, and everyone gets influenced by it. So is this more kind of Turkic music, a more recent discovery for you? Or was it something you were familiar with growing up in kind of the more Dalmatian musical? Um, I was very familiar with Dalmatian music growing up, but not, mm. you know, what people think of when they think of Balkan music. I mm -hmm. wasn't as familiar with that until maybe high school. Okay. And so you play with an ensemble called Ensemble Illyrica, is that right? Yes, yes. <laughs> how's that how's that going now they're in croatia yeah one of us lives in croatia and we're based in croatia. <laughs> okay um, two of us two, half the ensemble lives in vienna so we kind of meet up in croatia <laughs> cool um yeah so it's you know a mixed weird mixed chamber ensemble guitar flute viola cello and we do classical music but mm -hmm. Um, with a little bit of a flair I mean, there's uh, a lot we do a lot of music based off of folk music or uh, play pieces by local composers for example my, uh, Lyrica just premiered a piece by composer Mark Morfic for the Zagreb Biennale um, I obviously was not able to <laughs> sure that's yeah but well, we have more premieres coming this summer if mm. as well <laughs> Fingers crossed on that one. But yeah, um, we, we like to mess around um, with folky music and mm. even classical music. For example, we did a, a Schubert quartet that's actually written for our instrumentation. It's our one, you know, major request. <laughs> it's written for us for this ensemble. And the last movement is called Singara. And Schubert tried his best to create the right vibe of this music sure but when you give that music to um you know four balkan musicians they're gonna help him out a little bit <laughs> <laughs> they're like we see where you were going with this schubert 
we see what you wanted we're just yeah. gonna help you a little bit exactly um so you know we just add a little bit of flavor a little bit of flair mm. even if it's you know standard classical music <laughs> sure sure that's cool that's a nice that's a nice twist it was very liberating twist mm. we all grew up in this classical world <laughs> with like a little bit fear-based oh yeah mountain. and then we just were like mm, here's your schubert <laughs> here you go yeah that's like uh yeah i was i think i was overhearing one of my roommates talking to someone about just like the fear instilled in performers in classical music and how well toxic it is and kind of limiting to actual self-expression when you're always kind of judging yourself against you know rostopovich or whoever it might be yeah decades uh, centuries of other musicians playing the same music yeah there's one so i'm a big okay this is a tangent this is a little bit of a tangent this is like a fun little quirky tangent that we that we're going on i'm so i love early music and in particular music of the ars nova period from like the 1300s the 1200s are pretty cool too but the 1300s is like where <laughs> i where i'm really happy and i'm a big fan of guillaume de macho and he wrote like the first mass setting that we can attribute to a single person in its entirety called the Messe de Notre Dame or Nostradam, I think in old French. And there's this great performance by Ensemble Organum, which kind of infuses this mass with Byzantine ornamentation and vocal style. Like it, again, and like in a in our typical classical mindset, it's like, well, that none of that's written in. Like, I don't know why you're doing that. And I think one of the reasons I like early music so much is there is so much that we don't know that we can be a little bit more flexible. They're breaking all the rules because the rules weren't written yet. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and it's and it's easy to imagine too that like 700 years ago, our kind of different separate musical cultural styles were not nearly as distinct. And that what we think of as Gregorian chant, we may perform it or think of it differently from other forms of chant now, but who's to say that wasn't the opposite case or, or, or distinctly different 700 years ago. And so, yeah, I've been thinking a lot more about that in terms of my own classical performance, because I don't really perform as a solo pianist anymore. And I think partly Good. it's because, well, yeah, it's like partly like every time I would perform solo piano, it's like, oh my God, okay, I got to do it memorized. I can't make any mistakes because if I have a memory slip, that's the end of the world. Oh, I was thinking just, you, you know, your song playing. <laughs> so just oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, my own kind of musical career and, and journey is kind of headed, shifting in a, in a different direction in, or has been in the last couple of years. I think even while I was at Stony Brook for music composition, even just like at the end of the first semester, I was like, oh, I don't think... I think things are shifting away from like classical mm. performance and even maybe even classical composition. I am working on a classical commission at the moment, but a lot of my focus is going. Um, That's what happened to me in Stony Brook too. It's yeah. Very interesting. Cool. Maybe Stony Brook just has that effect on people. <laughs> <laughs> so I hear Eva that you're, <laughs> that you're collaborating. Speaking of Stony Brook university is a clean, easy segue. Uh, you seem to be collaborating a lot with a Stony Brook composer <clears throat> by the name of David Kroll. Very good. Got it right uh, the first time. <laughs> we actually formed a duo. We named ourselves. We haven't, you know, put anything out there yet, but it oh. will come out there <laughs> soon. So, so you're not ready to release the name yet? Nah, I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's not a big, you know, oh, it's a secret, you know. Just Okay. I haven't put it out there yet. Okay, that's fair. But uh, yeah, he's, um, well, we started with um, him transposing a piece that he wrote for violin um, at the start of the pandemic, violin trio called Luna, um, mm -hmm. and it's now a cello trio. Nice, <laughs> and it sounds very good. And he added to the piece, he changed it, he added a, like a solo cello movement to it, and that started our musical collaboration, basically. And yeah. since then we've, done a few things together we're working on a new project also yeah that the solo cello movement i think is my favorite out of luna 
It's so nice. I was just playing it for some schools in DC. Mm. <laughs> oh, <fun>. cool. <laughs> yeah. Didn't you made a music video for Luna and didn't that get like picked up at a film festival somewhere? It was a uh, finalist for oh. a festival in Prague. Um, wait, Prague International Monthly Film Festival. Okay, they're get, <laughs> they would be so pissed if you got that wrong. Yeah. And They'd be typing in the comments. Like some indie film festival. Sweet. Um, it was a, I don't know, it was an official selection or honorable mention, I forget. <laughs> it's not, it's not, I mean, it's good either way. It's, yeah. That was nice. But yeah, it was um, a project that could only have happened because of the, this pandemic. It would have been impossible, like filming of that movie and finding locations, everything that was only possible because we were both stuck on Long Island. Oh, sure. Had a lot of time. <laughs> How long did it take to film? We started scouting locations in May. And basically, um, everywhere we went, we would bring a tripod and some footage made it. But most of the footage we took at a place called Orient in North Fork. Nice. We discovered that in June. And that's when we started really filming. And so I think we filmed for about a month from there. And that's when okay. we started the cello shots and you know bringing my cello to this um, very humid environment full of mm. horse oh horse flies oh geez <laughs> that's no fun i don't think there's a single shot in that movie in which i'm not feeling <laughs> the stings <laughs> mm, so not the ideal performance environment you would say it was worth it <laughs> it worked out and you can't tell that you're being bitten all the time the incredible thing is that some of our favorite shots mm. were the days that we suffered the most hmm interesting yeah i wonder if there's a life lesson in there somewhere all right well let's see now we've reached the point in the video where we should talk about something other than music because not everyone is watching the video as a, as a musician hmm. but i have no idea what to talk about <laughs> that isn't <laughs> related to music in some way can you do you have any things in particular anything questions you have for me anything you want to talk about i want to know hmm how like what what is your day like <laughs> how do you exist oh gosh that's this, a good question yeah that's a good question so my days how do i answer this question without it being sad um <laughs> no i so i don't wake up at any particular time mm-hmm. i don't set an alarm mostly on sundays you know i have to go out to church on Long Island to work. So I set an alarm on those days. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I'll, I'll write that in on, 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 on a Sunday soon. Also, I'm coming out, I've been coming out on Wednesdays for midweek services and the first week of April is Holy Week. And so I think I'm gonna be coming out on Thursday and Friday too, for Monday, Thursday and Good Friday. So. I'm going to be in your area a lot. <laughs> Good to know. Yeah, so we can make something work. But yeah, most days I, I just, I get up when I get up. I let my eyes kind of determine that. And I tend to stay up pretty late and I tend to get up pretty late. So I get up maybe like 11 in the morning, something like that. Wow. Yeah. And then I just kind of stay in my room, catch up on some YouTube vids. You know, you gotta. And then maybe I have a little bit of lunch. And then I try to accomplish something. Again, I think especially with the, the, the period of time that should not be named of the past year, my mindset was no deadlines. I'm not going to give myself any deadlines. I'm not going to give my performers any solid deadlines. That's why I was asking you, because I'm, I'm very curious how other creative people are handling the floating. Yeah. I'm, I like deadlines. I tend to do well with deadlines. I don't tend to do well with my own deadlines. Mm-hmm, same. So if you were like, hey, David, I'm going to need you to have this video that we're filming right now edited by this weekend, I'll do it. I'll do that. I will edit the movie and send it to you this weekend. But if I was like, I should really probably edit this movie and show it to Eva on the weekend, it's probably not happening. 
And so because I don't have many people giving me deadlines, and I know that I can't take my deadlines very seriously at the moment, I tend to just try to do like three creative things a day. Oh, I like and that. And yeah, and it doesn't have to be a lot either. But if I, at the end, if at the end of the day, I go, well, I played some mandolin and I composed a little bit and I played a couple songs, that'll do. And, and so I rarely have a day where I feel like I did nothing. Mm-hmm because my expectations just are a little bit different than they may have been in the past. Although now with my album coming out on April 30th and these little interview vids with my friends, I actually do have a deadline. And since I've announced this deadline so publicly, it's a, it's a <laughs> very, <laughs> I can't back out. No, this is a very real deadline now. People are paying attention now because they don't have deadlines also. Yeah. Exactly. Distracted by it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, yeah, that's kind of how I live my life. And I try to get outside. I don't always succeed every day, but I try to like go on a walk and do something. Hmm. I like that. What, what, have you, what have you been up to in terms of well, your in normal our, days? Well, I guess we kind of touched on me exploring other musical styles, right? Mm. And I'm trying to learn how to balance doing that kind of music, like some kind of improvisatory music, some kind of folk music, stuff that really brings me lots of joy and gives me a spark. Balance that with learning like box six. (laughs) Beautiful, gorgeous, very difficult music. (laughs) Sure. Oh, yeah. With a lot of internalized pressure and that kind of thing and so i i've had this issue of getting stuck on the thing that i feel pressure about because yeah. I'm, I'm not ready to leave i'm like i'm not done yet <laughs> yeah it's not perfect i can't move on to the fun stuff until i do the the very difficult scary thing you know yeah i like your approach actually of kind of just i'm gonna do three different creative things a day because um i'm trying to learn to balance those things but yeah, I go outside. Um, recently saw a wild, several wild seals. Ooh, in the sound? Yeah, Montauk, so it's very edge of the island. Gotcha. Probably one of my top Long Island bucket list items. Mm-hmm. The seals. Yeah, I, I uh, nature has been really crucial <laughs> for me. Yeah. I'm actually really glad that I have my job out on Long Island for that reason. I it think if I was- Long Island has to offer. It is incredible. Totally. Totally. If you're going to go to Long Island, go for the nature. Yeah. Forests, beaches. Yeah. I'm not sure what else you're going out to Long Island to do if it's not outside. Um, I agree. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> cool um but yeah definitely you know living in brooklyn if i didn't have that little weekend escape every once in a while i think i might go a little a little batty um sometimes i I go into brooklyn for escape from nature (laughs) sure you gotta have a little bit of both i think it's like i need to see a human face i need some energy (laughs) and i need to see a tree i mean you know you have those days exactly yeah yeah do you do you like do you like seals? I like this one in particular. Mm. This little guy. I arrived to Montauk. He's, you know, soaking in the sun. Mm-hmm. Go for a hike for a couple hours. Come back. He's still there. <laughs> it's like he did a little wave. Oh. Which um I choose to interpret as a friendly gesture, but um after researching a little bit it might actually be a bit of a territorial gesture oh but i reject (laughs) (laughs) i rejected that (laughs) i reject the science my opinions is a happy little wave body language yeah (laughs) (laughs) yeah that is interesting how like some animals have like defense mechanisms and territorial displays that just like seem so cute and friendly. Hi. (laughs) (laughs) 
the other oh, seals great. just kind of got i mean we were very far from them that one was the closest one but the mm. other seals they were much further away but they got so nervous and just like slid into the water this one just stuck it out for hours <laughs> good for good for good for that seal i feel like also i feel like that seal knows like they're not getting in the water <laughs> no. like there's no way can't handle it yeah maybe yeah. that's that seals like one of the older seals that's like Actually, knows a bit about humans i think it's pretty young oh really yeah oh quick learner i guess they're wiser they left <laughs> <laughs> oh that could be it i suppose well oh, cool. yeah it's seal season everyone you heard it here first. Go <laughs> go out and see some seals. Now's the time. Uh, May, I think. You know what I want to see? And I've only seen a carcass. I want to see horseshoe crabs. Yeah. I've only seen a dead horseshoe crab on the beach. And it's not the same. It's not the same. But I've always been, I've always loved horseshoe crabs and was very sad that they were only on the East Coast and not in California. And then I come out to Long Island and they're horseshoe crabs. They're and, yeah, they're all over the place. David, mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of jellyfish. Oh, sure. Jellyfish. Are, I think I was, I, I think there was one time I was walking around Stony Brook by the beach and I was just like wading through the water. And then I looked, looked down and there are like thousands of jellyfish. I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, get back on the beach, I think. Oh my. There were like a lot. Yeah. I've only seen the washed up ones that made me think of you. Oh. Oh the oh the jelly oh the jellyfish song. <laughs> I was wondering where you're going with that. <laughs> so I, I wrote I wrote this little silly song about jellyfish. But yes. Yeah, it's interesting. I don't like I don't like they're cool. Jellyfish are cool. But I, I don't I, I don't have a great affinity for them. It's like eh, jellyfish, whatever. Horseshoe crabs though. You've discovered all you needed to know about them when you Every... <laughs> that jellyfish. When... <laughs> When I dissected them, I kind of solved all the jellyfish mysteries there were. Um, You're done. You've moved on. They're done. <laughs> they're no longer mysterious to me. I understand everything there is to know. <laughs> but yeah, horseshoe crabs, they got blue blood. Like, what's up with that? Like, I need, I need to know more. And every time I've been to the beach on Long Island, it has not been horseshoe crab season. So when is horseshoe crab season? Are they bottom dwellers? Where, what, where are they? Where... <laughs> I don't, I, again, they're enigmas. <laughs> they're mysteries. I don't know. I wish I knew all these questions. There's a Wikipedia page where you can learn about them. <laughs> no, no, probably not. No. No. I think that's the one page they don't have on there. Oh. I think, I think you type, you go to Wikipedia, you type mm -hmm. in horseshoe crab, it, the page pops up and it's just that emoji of the guy shrugging. Oh. I think that's all you, that, because every, no one knows. It's, it's just like, I, I, who has a clue? I should be a horseshoe crab scientist. That's what I should be. I don't know what I'm doing. I await the song on your next album. <laughs> All about horseshoe crabs. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I could keep a horseshoe crab as a pet in a Brooklyn apartment. <gasps> oh, they're not for pets. This is your little scientific journey with sea animals. Although I did just picture like walking around Brooklyn with a horseshoe crab on a leash, like a little string tied around a little tail wouldn't be surprised <laughs> it wouldn't be very nice of me to, to yeah, yeah no one would look no one would bat an eye <laughs> just like oh yeah it's a white guy with a horseshoe crab on a string <laughs> that's that seems par for the course around here well we're gonna have to meet up at some point and enjoy the great outdoors and uh i'll try to look up when horseshoe crabs come out i feel like it's probably spring maybe i'm making that up i don't know i'll, I'll check it out really afraid to see a live one i don't know how i would feel oh if you're with me and there are horseshoe crabs, we're gonna have a great time. We'll go look for their spots. Yeah, we'll see where they hang out. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm just imagining a personified horseshoe crab behind a rock with a cigarette. Like we found their hangout. Oh man, I love horseshoe crabs. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, I think that'll do. I think we got all we need. We got we got the footage, baby. Wonderful. Yeah. Yay. It's been lovely talking to you, Eva. I hope everyone watching is eagerly awaiting her uh, wonderful cello playing on Contemporary Cowboy. Looking forward to the album. Yeah. And uh, our next walk. So. Yeah, that'll be soon. That'll be soon. We'll make that work. 
Nice talking to you. Thanks for having me. Bye. Bye. <laughs>